Well, folks, I am really glad that this afternoon uh, we will come together as an Armed Services Committee and engage in the National Defense Authorization Act. It will be a bipartisan event. Uh, but uh, as you look around the world, what we see is a world on fire. We saw Joe Biden at the very beginning of his presidency decide to abandon our allies in Afghanistan, and man, things have really gone to heck ever since then. So our allies don't trust us anymore, and certainly our adversaries are emboldened by the weakness that they see coming out of the White House. We have a very, very feeble-minded and willed man that is our Commander-in-Chief. And hopefully, this fall, we will see a change with this next election. So again, uh, let's focus on the White House and what their policy has been. So on one hand, you'll hear Joe Biden say, out of this side of his mouth, Hey, Israel, we've got an ironclad commitment to you. And then the doublespeak starts, where it is, oh, well, we're not going to provide you the weapons you need. Ha, ha, ha. The next thing, we're going to sanction Iran. And then over here, we're not going to enforce them, which means we've got a five-year high of oil revenues going into Iran, over $80 billion worth that should have been sanctioned. And of course, with Ukraine, he pushed and pushed and pushed Congress to get an aid to Ukraine bill done. Get the Ukraine bill done. And then over here, oh, I'm sorry, Ukraine, you can't use these weapons to strike inside of Russia. Folks, I don't know what's going on in this administration other than Joe Biden is so darn weak. Maybe he doesn't really understand what's going on. I have never known a country to win a war by staying in a defensive position. This has got to stop. It's why I am working on an NDAA that strengthens our military and makes us the most lethal fighting force on the face of the planet. And I hope our Democrats join us in this endeavor.